More now on the blockbuster deal for Olympic TV rights and what it means for Comcast, the cable company that bought NBC Universal and is now committed to spending at least $4.4 billion covering the next four Olympic Games. With us this morning, the man who literally wrote the rules for Olympic broadcasting, Neil Pilsen. Neil is the former head of CBS Sports, who later was a consultant on TV rights for the International Olympic Committee. He's on the phone with us from Lenox, Massachusetts this morning. Uh, Neil, NBC, which won the last round of bidding for the Olympics, has projected losses of half a billion dollars for the 2010 and 2012 Olympic Games. Why on earth double down on a losing bet? Well, uh... The Olympics are very important to NBC. Uh, they are one of their franchise sports. Uh, they've invested a tremendous amount of money in the games. Uh, they do it well. And I think they felt that uh, with the merger with Comcast, uh, this was a validation uh, of that merger. Uh, this is one of the reasons that uh, the merger took place. It was to create these multiple platforms, uh, both on cable, broadcast, uh, internet, mobile, uh, they now have uh, a wide range of channels uh, and uh, distribution outlets. And uh, I think they just felt, f from their perspective, retaining the Olympics was a very important part of their corporate uh, psyche. They, they, they needed to keep the games. And uh, uh, the fact is that the new Olympic deal is actually a standstill in terms of the rights negotiations, the rights fees that were paid. Uh, the next two Olympics following the two under contract are at the same price. And then the last two games are basically at around a 15% increase, which for sports rights is quite modest. So help us understand the strategy and the tactics that NBC, which is now controlled by Comcast, might pursue in order to make those next two games, and uh, they would hope the two games after that, profitable? Okay. Uh, just one example is Versus, one of their principal channels, and, and one that I think will, will surely get uh, a lot of new and important sports programming. Uh, Versus right now is in about 75 million homes. If they're able to grow Versus by 25 million, so that it becomes a fully distributed channel comparable to ESPN at 100 million homes. Uh, that's 25 million additional homes uh, times, let's say, 30 cents a subscriber. You increase the pricing times 12 because it's a it's a full uh, full year. Uh, that's that's a that's a revenue stream that's like forever. Uh, you're talking about another 60, 80 million dollars a year uh, just from Versus alone. Uh, I think also they, uh, they plan to uh, uh, incorporate Olympic coverage across, across the wide range of channels that are controlled by the merged company, both the NBC channels and the, uh, and the Comcast channels. I think there's an Olympic channel uh, in, in, the, in view. Uh, there was a question on it at the press conference from Lausanne yesterday, and while it will take the combined approval of the IOC, the USOC, and the TV carrier, uh, I, think, uh, I think that's in the future. So, Neil, so there are several. Yeah, I was ahead. just going to say, between Versus and the possibility of an Olympic channel, is that enough in your mind to distinguish what NBC has to offer and how it can make money, let's say, from what uh, Disney and its ESPN channel, which also made a bid, uh, could offer because, as you're probably aware, Disney issued a statement in which it said, we made a disciplined bid that would have brought tremendous value to the Olympics and would have been profitable for our company to go any further, would not have made good business sense to us. In a backhanded way, Disney's accusing Comcast of overpaying. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, the, uh, the interesting thing from my perspective, and I had this disagreement with CBS uh, 18 years ago when I argued that we should keep the NFL, and my boss, uh, Lawrence Tisch, uh, felt that it was too expensive. Uh, the Olympics uh, are a major sports program that helps Comcast and NBC in other ways. It helps them uh, promote other programming. It gives them very strong ratings in prime time, uh, certainly uh, during the season with the winter games. 
And there are, there are good corporate reasons to uh, stay with a major sports property, uh, even if it's a borderline uh, profit generator. Neil, uh, you are highlighting the key issue here for investors. How do you show, how does Brian Roberts prove to, NB, to, to Comcast shareholders that what you say is right? Because on a standalone basis, they're losing money, but you say there are collateral benefits, correct? Those That's are very right. difficult to quantify. That's why investors are nervous about the $4.4 billion that Mr. Roberts is slapping on the table. Well, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a task that Mr. Roberts and, and his executive staff uh, have to address. Uh, the Olympics uh, can help NBC uh, in prime time. Uh, NBC right now is the fourth network in terms of uh, ratings. Uh, they need major properties, anchor properties, to promote their other programming. Uh, and I think they felt that uh, the Olympics were, were very important to them. Uh, very important to the growth of some of their other platforms. Very important in terms of a franchise Neil? that, uh, in effect, validates the merger. Yes, go ahead. Neil, thank you so much for joining us. Neil Pilsen of Pilsen Communications, the man who wrote the rules, literally, on Olympic TV broadcasting rights.